On today's show, the Miami Heat and Portland Trailblazers are in a standoff regarding Damian Lillard. Which team ultimately blinks first? What does an offer even look like at this point from the Miami Heat? Are they not willing to put up their best offer because there aren't actually any other bidders? Are other teams afraid that Dame might not be happy to play anywhere but Miami? We're going to break it all down for you coming right here at Locked On NBA. You are Locked On NBA. Your daily NBA podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Now, what is prize picks? It's daily fantasy sports, but how does it work? Basically, you pick two to six players that they score more or less than their prize picks projection. You can win up to 25 times back on your money on any entry that you submit. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections that prize picks makes available. And prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. That's NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA. The list goes on. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that simple. They're safe. They offer fast withdrawals currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That means if you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. So don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Joining us now is the host of Locked On Heat, David Ramil. You can track down wherever you listen to your podcasts and on YouTube. Just search Locked On Heat. And David, it feels like we've been in this holding pattern with the Damian Lillard trade request saga for a, a while now. I mean, at this point, just how long should we expect this to go on for this little song and dance between the Heat and the Blazers and ultimately them trying to figure out a deal to make this thing come to fruition? I have no idea, and I don't think anybody else has any clear uh, kind of glimpse as to what's going on. Like, the latest reporting seems to indicate that Portland wants Miami to make their best offer. Miami wants Portland to tell them what they want, and so both of them are kind of stuck in this ridiculous stalemate. I would have thought that the two parties would have met in Las Vegas a week or so ago to at least hash out these initial things, and no reporting has seemed to indicate that that's taken place. And that being the case... I could see this going on for another week, another month, maybe another even couple of months. And and again, this is assuming that Miami is the likely final destination, but that could all change. Portland could decide halfway through this process, you know what? We don't care if Damian Lillard wants to play in Miami. We want to send him to Toronto or Philadelphia or Brooklyn or elsewhere because there are so many different potential suitors here, none of which seem realistic, at least in the sense that that's not where Dame wants to play. And that much has been reported and confirmed. And so it's all very vague, man. Like it, it's put us in a holding pattern, just even from a podcasting perspective. At the same time, it gives us a lot to talk about during a, a dead zone in the off season. But it's uh, it's very confusing, and and it's it's kind of put Miami in a difficult spot because I think they want to make some additional roster moves, but they can't really make those until the Dame Lillard thing is finalized. Yeah, you have to be able to figure out what the holes in the roster are going to look like after a potential Damian Lillard deal actually takes place. You know, when we got the perspective of Mike Richmond, our Locked On Blazers host on here, he he seemed under the impression that the Blazers would ultimately do right by Dame, right, and send him to the destination that he wants to ultimately go to. Right. Now, as you alluded to, that could just completely change halfway through this process. Maybe the Blazers get fed up with Miami not playing ball, but I am really curious, are, my, are the Heat really the only serious bidders at this point and that's why things have stalled out to to where they are right now because Miami doesn't feel the need to necessarily put their best offer on the table because they're basically just bidding against themselves at that point, right? Yeah, I mean, I would have to agree with that. It just seems like enough teams are aware of the fact that Lillard, it would be unhappy there. Like that, I, I think a lot of reporters and even people I talked to in Las Vegas seem to think that you know, that that was a little bit of a smokescreen, that Dame being the professional that he is, the accomplished veteran that he is, if he was traded to state Brooklyn or Philadelphia or anywhere else, that he would eventually report to camp and do his job because he loves basketball that much. And he he wants to uphold that that kind of idea of him being a professional committed to winning at all costs. 
And so if he doesn't wind up going to his ideal destination, which is, again, Miami, then he would still wind up playing for those other teams. But I think other teams believe it just enough. And maybe Aaron Goodwin, Dame's agent, has gone around and said, you know what? Put in an offer at your own risk. He won't report. He doesn't. He's not going to be happy that he wants to play in Miami. And that being the case, if Miami is aware of that, then why would they outbid themselves? This is what negotiators do. This is what smart front offices like Miami do, because there's no reason to put all their chips in the table right away because there's nobody else bidding against them. And so I, I think enough teams have probably been scared off by Lillard's attitude and by whatever machinations his agent have been able to kind of work his way through over the last couple of weeks. What does Miami's best offer look like right now? Like if they wanted <laughs> to just end this song and dance, if they just wanted to just say, hey, th we, you know that this is the best thing that we can push forward, all the chips to the center of the table. What does it look like right now? It's not great. It's not great. And I'll be the first to admit it. I know Miami fans uh, have been very vocal on social media saying, you know what, Lillard's going to get done. This is the right place for him, et cetera. But I, I think you can stack potential packages against what Miami might be able to offer and still realize Miami's isn't the best. At least I have that perspective. It's probably, you know, salary cap filler, Duncan Robinson, maybe Kyle Lowry. It depends on what they have to include, whether or not you know, uh, Yerkich is included from the Portland side of things. And maybe we were hearing multiple teams getting involved. And so we have no idea where the final salaries have to be in terms of like what has to be outgoing from Miami's. But let's assume it's maybe Larry, probably Duncan Robinson. And, Dun and Tyler Hero, I know, is at the centerpiece of it. But I obviously, Portland has no interest in acquiring Hero. So it's what Miami or what Portland can get in exchange for Tyler Hero in the sense that, Will they ship him to Brooklyn, which I think is a great fit for him and maybe get one pick and maybe a serviceable player, a young player or something like that. Aside from that, on the Miami side of things, you're looking at a couple of first round picks, a couple of pick swaps. I think the total number is three picks and three pick swaps. I, I don't know exactly how it works because, again, it seems like it changes daily. And then maybe even including last year's rookie Nikola Jovic. Uh, and then also this year's rookie, uh, Jaime Hakez. So I'm not sure exactly how realistic it would be for Miami to include all those things. But again, why bother putting that on the table if if Portland is kind of held right now to to one, you know, uh, partner in terms of finalizing this trade? Like I I just don't get it. Like a lot of people seem to think. And look, even even what you're saying, what Miami isn't. You know, if Miami could just end this right by getting it done and quit playing around, et cetera. It's like, why would Miami go in there? You don't go and buy a car and say, give me your best offer. I'll increase it by 20, <laughs> you know, 20,000. That, like, that doesn't make any sense. If right now their best offer is like, you know, two picks and Duncan Robinson, take it or leave it. You know what? Nobody else is offering anything. So why wouldn't it go to Miami? Why wouldn't Miami play it that way? And then ultimately say, you know what? Fine. We'll we'll give a little bit more. And I'm not, I think a sticking point and one that we've talked about on this show, reported on this show was that, you know, Caleb Martin is somebody that Miami wants to hang on to. And a lot of people around the league are saying, well, Caleb Martin, he was undrafted. He's not even that good, et cetera. Well, he's a he's a serviceable player. We saw him in the playoffs kind of outsize his role there. He really, really played well for the Heat when they were making their run to the finals. And so I think Miami would like to keep them, especially if they have to give up Jovic and Hakez in a potential trade because their, their wing depth is going to be absolutely depleted. So I think they'd like to keep Martin. And we'll see how it plays out. Like, it could change. The names kind of seem to change daily. You're hearing reports about these picks being included, these players being included. Makes it very difficult. I mean, I talked to Jovic in Vegas, and he's just like, you know, what? What are you going to do? Like, you hear your name in the rumors. I try to ignore it. I try to overlook it. At the same time, you know it's real. You know it's happening out there, and you just try to play the best you can despite everything hanging over the team. Like, Hawkins is out doing promotional work for the Heat, and, and it's just like, well, is he even going to be in a Heat uniform? Like, on August 1st, apparently, is the deadline where they could trade him even though he was just drafted. So, like, in a couple of weeks, he might be playing for another team, and nobody seems to know if that's the case. Yeah, that's kind of the crazy thing when you look at this whole situation is I do wonder how much, you know, the Heat potentially value or are weighing that, you know, that unfortunate circumstance of the human element of all this, right, where you've mm -hmm. got this kind of cloud lingering over the organization. Do you really want this following all these guys, Tyler Harrow, Duncan Robinson, Jaime Hawkins, into training camp, into the beginning part of the season, right? Is that something that they think could adversely impact them if you've got these guys, like, looking over their shoulder their whole time just waiting for the other shoe to drop? with Damian Lillard and, and finally just, you know, forcing his way out and saying, you know what, fine, or, or the Blazers finally saying, you know what, fine, give us your, you know, your B to your offer, your C to your offer. Is there a point where right. do you think the Heat would just say, 
and just decide, you know what? No, we're good. We're good on Dame. Like, if they get off to a hot start this next year, if things look good, do you think there's a point where they just decide, you know what? You guys missed your window on trading him to us. No, uh, Miami's pursuit of a superstar will always trump everything else. Like they've got a really good player and Teller Hero. And from what we talked about, it seems like they're giving up a big chunk of their depth in order to acquire Lillard. But Pat Riley believes, and the rest of the front office is in an agreement with him, that in order to win a championship, you're going to need superstar players, at least just based on what this roster has. Either you have an incredible one-of-one type player like Nikola Jokic, and that's why the Nuggets were able to beat Miami so handily in the finals, or you have an accumulation of superstars that could get you over the hump. Because if you look at what, you know, Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo as the two central stars of this team have been able to do, it's two runs to the finals, three runs to the Eastern Conference finals, and still make the playoffs in four of the last seasons that Jimmy's been part of the team. So they're good. They're just not good enough. And in order to be good enough, you need a player like Lillard. You need a superstar. Last year was Kevin Durant, Donovan Mitchell, Bradley Beal was rumored to be part of it, although I think that was kind of overreported in terms of Miami's actual interest in acquiring Beal. So I think it's Lillard, and and that is the only player that they really want at this point in time because I think he is the one to put them over the hump in terms of his relationship with Bam, the connection with Bam, the way he compliments what Bam and Jimmy do so well. It's Lillard or bust. How long will the uh, Damian Lillard saga play out for? Will he ultimately join the Miami Heat? Is this something that just bleeds into a next season? And what subsequent moves need to be made after the fact, if it ultimately happens to round out the rest of the roster? Of course, you have us covered for all that and more over at Locked on Heat. David, I appreciate you stopping by Locked on NBA with me. Absolutely.